Let us know when we're live. Live. We're live? Okay. Microphones are going on, Darren. Welcome back to Talk Recovery, Vancouver Cooperative with CFRO 100.5 FM. That was a fun song, and that was a great interview. That, um, that was a pretty, pretty... That's the first time we ever had somebody take some time to do, like, a, a breathing exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is... Which is good. Yeah. It is good. Well, that's it's the important. power of co-op radio, because you can do that. I mean, I've been gifted to be on radio shows that are yeah. part of the mainstream media. And yeah. There's no way you're you like... You can't breathe. No, don't, no time for breathing. We have to sell commercials, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's the beauty of Talk Recovery Radio. Nice. We can talk about what we want to talk about. Do whatever cool. we want. So Thank that's, you, Vancouver Call Radio. And, and what an interesting concept to take the D out of PTSD and, and not call it a disorder. That's probably a huge conversation in the... I'm not even too sure what to think about that, to be honest to, with you. I've been to a lot of conferences on PTSD, and yeah, it's just, I it's don't just know. Stress. It's an emotional response to dealing with trauma. Yeah. It, 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 that's a human thing. It doesn't have to be labeled a disorder. Yeah, I don't know. Just want to throw a pill at it. Right? And I guess, yeah, I'm not too sure. So uh, we are now in our fifth season of Talk Recovery Radio. We just finished having an interview um, about PTSD and uh, what's it called? Camp My Way, which was really great. And uh, we are can uh, continue on with personal stories uh, in our fifth year on Talk Recovery Radio. And uh, today we've got more... Marissa on the show. Hi, Marissa. Hi. All right, Marissa, got to get a little closer. There you go. And uh, super happy to have you on the show, Marissa. And uh, me and uh, Marissa and I uh, get to uh, enjoy a home group every Monday together. Um, so I've known Marissa for a while, and uh, I'm glad that you're in my life, and I'm glad that you're here. So tell us uh, a bit of your story. Uh, you know, you are... Um, here on the radio show talking about addiction recovery. How long have you been in recovery for? I've been in recovery for about six years and ten months now. Okay. <laughs> and this is my first time. Yay. And I've never relapsed. Oh, so. the first time? Yeah. So you're an anomaly. So it's interesting <laughs> you just say that because there is a, a research paper out there called Life in Recovery uh, Canada and they did this research project and they found that 54% of people that used drugs and went to treatment didn't relapse. And the addiction community went crazy saying, that's not true, and you know that's impossible, and you asked the wrong people. So you are one of those 52%. Wow. Yeah, I know. Which does it make her special and unique then? <laughs> it's, it's, it's so bizarre that everybody would argue that, so I'm glad that, because it is true, lots of people go to treatment one time and, and, do it, and do it straight up. So what was that like for you going to treatment? Were you like, oh, I've got a heroin problem or a drug problem going to treatment, or was there like... No, I'm not going. <laughs> well, I knew I needed something. I knew I was like super messed up, and I went. Didn't know. Didn't know that what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I got there, that very first day, and I got into that safe place, and I just felt an overwhelming sense of safety. You did, okay. <laughs> and like hope and then that first night and I went to my first meeting and I said hi my name's Marissa and I'm an addict I actually didn't know what that was I didn't know the actual definition of what an addict was I had this stereotypical idea you know, of what it yeah. was and so I went I sat down for that hour and I listened to everyone share of themselves and it was the most incredible thing ever <laughs> like ever I just got that deepened sense of um, right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. I did. Um, that's good. It, that's not normal for a lot of people. I remember for me, my first couple of meetings, was like, get me out of here. These people are weird. So it's good that you found that. I mean, you have your your First Nations. Did you find it um, difficult to start your recovery process? Did you feel um, like you had any difficulties finding, like how did you even figure out that you had to go to treatment? Well, I kept ending up in the hospital and for one thing or another and I just, <laughs> I was homeless for a year and I didn't, but I justified, you know, I'm not really homeless because I'm still working and 
even though I was couch surfing, but all these bad things kept happening to me. And in the very end, like, I was in like a total blackout. I didn't even know what was happening. Cause like I got a lot, a lot of money. Um, and so I was like gone. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I went to detox and slept for a week and they recommend that I go to a safe place. So I'm like, sure, I can do that, you know, get work off my back, my boyfriend, my family. But it was the best thing that ever happened to me, even though I didn't want to and I didn't think I needed to. And what was the length of process? Like did you go to rehab for a couple of days? Did you go to rehab for a year? What was what was your process? I ended up staying for seven months even though they kept asking, like, you have to stay until you finish your first set of steps. And I didn't know how long that was going to be. So we were like, how long? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't think I want to stay that long. I don't think I need to. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say was one of the biggest changes in your life because of recovery? Obviously not using drugs and alcohol, uh, you know, is a big one. But what are some of the biggest changes you've had? Facing my past. Um, overcoming my fears. Especially stuff like, you know, I was um, abused as a child and ostracized for being native, having red skin. And that was, that took a big, big toll on me my whole life. So what do you think is the difference between you and some of your other sisters that are still using? Because, you know, I, I've been part of the downtown east side for a while now. And there's a big conversation out there. First Nations people have a have it harder to get into recovery and you know there's a lot of um, racism and criticism and and uh, trauma and and so forth and there's specialized programs for the first nations community and so forth how did you get through that like what, what that might be able to help someone that's listening i was just open like especially like being on a reserve it's so prevalent and there's no help because every most everyone is like the same and it's just kind of like drilled into you like even growing up as a kid and being um sorry uh like going dealing with racism and like everyone having that that uh stereotypical thing like oh natives are stupid and drunks and yeah just I had someone tell me once uh, a friend of mine uh, who's First Nations as well is now clean and and so a lot of people that don't know this there's there's First Nations treatment centers and then there's other treatment centers and then it's called the NADAP programs are across the country and and uh, he had said, you know, I'm glad I came to an, like a non-native treatment center because I had to learn how to stop using drugs, not how to be a better First Nations person. Like I already knew how to do that. It's just I needed to stop using drugs. Um, what do you think of that statement? Yeah, I think everyone has their own way. Yeah. Like there's also another way for Aboriginals to be called uh, the Red Road. And like what is that? The Red Road. Okay, I'm. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, it kind of emulates um, the Twelve Step program, but in a traditional way. Oh, we've got to get them on the show. Yes. Yeah. Do you know anyone from the Red Road? My parents. Oh, perfect. I know your parents. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Her parents come to her. Do you mind if I? No, yeah, no, her no. parents come to her cake, um, and they, you know. <laughs> They don't. We don't have cake. We have bannock, and I always eat way too much. And uh, <laughs> you know, and they do a bit of a ceremony as well at the meeting and all that kind of stuff. And how does it? So you, you were your parents in recovery when you were using? They actually quit when I was turned seventeen. So you have these parents in recovery, and and you're using. It doesn't matter what your parents are doing. Kids are gonna do what kids are gonna do. Yeah, well, like with that way, they didn't push us away. They didn't look at us with ugliness or they didn't anything. They just embraced us and they were always there. And it didn't matter what we were. Hmm. Did you ever wonder like, oh, 
you know, my, did, did, it, did it make you mad your parents weren't using drugs and alcohol and had a problem? Were you envious? Or did you just black it out and ignore it? No, it was great. Um, they really embraced their spirituality when they quit. And um, so it was always, that was always present. And they were always present how they stopped. And the funny thing is I never thought I would use. I never thought I would drink ever. Um, so childhood because like all my family like my parents and all my aunts and uncles were all um, addicted and bad things happened to us when they left mm. and so I never ever thought I would <laughs> mm. and you, I mean it, it doesn't matter what you think like we said earlier being addicted to thinking life's just gonna happen now I was shocked in the car when we were talking you you have worked for 17 years for a homeless shelter Yes. Um, and which I didn't know. And what is it like being in recovery? So you worked there when you were loaded. Yes. And you work there now that you're clean. Yes. So um, what what is that like knowing that there's another? Not to say all homeless people are addicted, but there's obviously there must be using where you work. No. There's no using where you work. No, we are high barrier shelter. Okay, explain what that means. It just means we have zero tolerance for drugs or alcohol. Okay. And if we, there is people who do, so when we find them, that they'll have to leave. Okay. So how does it? So when you were using them, like, what is that like working in that environment? Really hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mostly took uh, graveyard shifts towards the end because I people were sleeping. I couldn't stop using. Yeah. Mm. And. Um, so, so wait a second. You you were homeless for a little while. So you were working at a homeless shelter while you were homeless. I just put the two together. Yes. And you thought you were all styling. Yes. I have a job at a homeless shelter, but I'm homeless. But my life's okay. Yes. And the people that are coming in can't use drugs. <laughs> and you're yeah. using drugs. So I can't. That is the kind of stuff that should be in movies. Like that's what we do, and it probably totally made sense. You know, and just how long did you do that for? Uh, I've been working there for 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that doesn't matter. Oh. It doesn't matter. So what are you doing today to keep yourself, you know, in a place where you can talk recovery? Everything and anything. I am actually in a place right now where I've never been. Mm -hmm. I am so full of like spirituality, of love, of energy, of, I can't even explain what else. Um, everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm saying is just coming together. I'm totally on the right path. I'm totally going in the right direction. I'm saying yes to everything that everyone's asking me and that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Some of the things that people are asking you that you say yes to, so people can understand what that means. What, what um, for example, uh, you asked me to be on the radio today, and I said yes. Oh, for sure, yes. Uh, a friend of mine asked me on the weekend to go to Squamish to, to go to this uh, visionaries gathering, and that was so mind blowing. Um, even just being in Squamish with uh, the mountains and the air and the water, and mm -hmm. being at that gathering, there was like all these people. They all heal in different ways, and it was just great learning about it. What were some of the things that you learned? Um, well, there was this old native couple. They taught us about uh, the medicine wheel. And there was this other lady. She was like a shaman. She taught us about um, healing with water. Um, there was this other guy. He was teaching about uh, healing addiction oh. with some sort of drug that he had. Oh, um, interesting. From Africa, yeah. And there was this other lady, she taught about healing with uh, contemporary dance. Well, on the weekend, that it, so that that'd be something I wouldn't mind going to, too, just to learn about different ideas. I don't know about the African drug thing. That might be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like the ayahuasca plant which we've had on the show before as well too. So there's always different ways to, to do recovery. So today you're, you're six and a half years clean? 
Uh, just about seven years. Just about seven years mm -hmm. thing, which you'll probably be taking a cake at our home group yes. pretty soon. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, one last comment to any woman out there. There's probably some moms watching and so forth whose daughter may still be using, you know, you've got a young daughter who is just up and coming. What's that like being a mom in recovery? You know, like, don't use marijuana or just, you know, like, how do, how do you raise your daughter? Um, with love, with experience. Um, my oldest daughter, she saw me use, especially in the end, and that was hard. She was just a teenager. And my youngest is now 14, so she's, exper uh, she's experimented with pot. And Does that make you nervous? Yes. You, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like I know now know like how it's legal. Felt. Yeah, well like <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter? Um, I don't have kids. Oh, I've got a baby that lives with me and I, I Dylan, Michael and Noah like uh, like I definitely don't want them to smoke weed, you know. It's just but I know I smoked a ton of weed even though my parents told me not to. So Well, it makes me nervous and not nervous because she's such a creative beautiful soul like She's been in dance for the past seven years, and now she's doing vocals and violin, and she knows where I've been and her father has been, and she's just, she's really smart. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope the best for her. I mean, it's always great seeing your daughter at the meetings coming for a visit, too. And, uh, super glad to have you on the show today. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got Marissa in studio today talking about her personal story, overcoming addiction. If you want to be on our show and you want to talk about your story, you can email jordanb at lastdoor.org. jordanb at lastdoor.org. He books all of our shows and all of our guests. Uh, Talk Recovery has been on air now for five years. This is our first show kickoff Ooh. for 2019. Uh, here with my co-host Darren. You can catch all our past shows at talkrecoveryradio.com. You can listen to us on iTunes and SoundCloud and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we've got a great year planned out for this year, so stay tuned. Talk Recovery Radio, we come to you live every Thursday, noon to one. Darren's going to close off our show with some music. That's right. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for watching. Uh, this has been Talk Recovery on Vancouver Co-op Radio, CFRO 100.5 FM. We're going to leave you off with a little Billy Joel, We Didn't Start the Fire. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, check us out next Thursday. We're here. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Owen. Give a shout out to Alex, our cameraman. Yay, Alex!